Thank you to Tokyo Treat and Soccer Co. for sponsoring today's video. Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So, um, today I thought it'd be fun to revisit drawing something with my fingers again. I know I haven't done this in a while and some people have requested it. Um, but because this isn't my usual drawing method, I would only literally do this only for a video. So we're going to see how this goes. Um, I'm going to actually check. Um, so yeah, September 20th is when I drew this one of Maseki, which is my OC. I think I'm going to draw my OC again. I don't know if I'm going to draw Maseki. I might draw my OC Akemi instead. Um, but I've had done another finger drawing but on my phone and this one was done on august 6th of last year so it's not quite been one year for this one and it's been not quite two years for this one but i thought it'd be fun to draw with my finger just to test it out i know there probably won't be too big of an improvement other than probably just my patience um, because i don't draw like this usually so let's go ahead and hop in i am going to make a new canvas most likely a 5 by 7 I think. Yeah, let's do a 5 by 7 I could work with a square, but uh, let's do 5 by 7 5 by 7 350 DPI, just in case if I do decide to do anything with it. Sorry it's really dark in here. I, my webcam really hates filming my iPad, so it's hard to get good lighting unless it's like um, natural sunlight. Um, but for brushes, I think we're going to go with the colored pencil. So I'm going to hit add. I am kind of debating do I want to take the texture off or not maybe we'll just leave it who knows so let's do color pencil use it for free okay now that I've watched the ad I have access to the brushes for 18 hours I am going to turn off the wi-fi so we can get the ads off yeah let's go like this I tried to fix the lighting a little bit so hopefully it's a little bit better I have half the mind to turn the canvas the other way so we could use it vertically because I think it's a little bit more better but um, I'm going to use it in the horizontal format just because it fits the camera better and the resolution size. But um, I need to turn on... Um, wait, where is anything in here? Okay, now that palm rejection is off. You can see that this is what um, the brushes currently look like. The reason why I'm drawing my OCs is because I don't really want to butcher it too badly if I actually do lose patience because I do think drawing with your fingers requires more patience. But the thing is, like, I don't know how I want to draw my OC. Uh, I think I'm going to draw Akemi. Mm, I forgot to mention this. This is probably the worst time to film this. I have a cut on my hand, um, kind of like a nick in my pinky, and then I have a blister on my finger. I just decided to cover it up because it did pop because I was cutting um, papers and stuff. I know a lot of people told me that I could adjust the paper color, which I really like um, doing prior, so it's not blaringly white on my screen. Okay, I'm gonna choose a, probably a dark purple, like a usually a muted purple. So we can use this for sketching. Let's do it like this. So you can kind of attach. Actually, how do I want him to face? This might work. I can make him carry like groceries or something. Oh, like ingredients or his bag mm, how did i wear my you know those tube tube things that you can carry like papers and stuff in i had one i still have it and you can extend it and stuff but i would use it to carry some of my larger drawing papers if i didn't want to lug around my portfolio case hopefully you guys can see i usually have my um ipad propped like this um when recording, but I'm recording it flat so that my hand can rest a little bit better. Now, I haven't decided if I'm going to do a painterly style or if I'm going to do more of a line work and we can paint in like the other details and things because I actually haven't done line work 
with my finger on Ibis paint before. So that could be something we could tackle. I always feel uncomfortable drawing with my finger because I actually can't tell. I know some people use their thumbs. Some people use their index finger. I feel like for me, I want to use um, my middle finger just because it's the longest one. And I can easily do this because for some reason if I do this, it feels more in the way. I think this will feel more natural if I'm like actually coloring. But for sketching, this feels the best. It makes it feel like it's a pencil. Maybe because I'm pressing my first finger, like my pointer finger on top. I could also fix the pressure sensitivity if I wanted to as well. So let's make sure to get enough information because I think, yeah, we're going to do line work, I think. So we can play around with the layers a little bit more. I know there's new effects. Um, I think there is like a reference uh, window now. Obviously the background color you can change. Akemi so uh, has a bit more of a slender and a bit softer face shape. But I also don't draw Masaki with a consistent face shape anymore, so we'll see how this goes. I have to zoom in so much. Maybe it's good if I open that reference window. Reference window. Okay. Okay, cool. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Can I... I'm sorry, can I resize this? Okay, I'm gonna put it over there. Yeah, because I'm already not liking his face all that much. It's okay. I'm kind of fix it up. Okay, so... Yeah, let's do his hair. I can kind of figure this out. Also, I feel like if you do draw with your hand or your finger, make sure to rest the rest your hand every so often. Because I know some people are saying like, um, can really put a lot of strain on your hand by doing this for too long. Just because like I know for me, it's like putting your wrist in a super, like a specific um, position for too long. He does have kind of. I don't have proper reference of this character, by the way. I was- actually, I don't know if I'm gonna do this on Saturday or not. You guys probably have seen it already if I did post a video, but hopefully I've drawn... So in terms of my, uh, male OCs, I guess I only really have three. I'm not counting Koji just because he's a kid. Um, but Masaki has a bit more broader shoulders than Akemi. Kind of more average build, kind of more, like, straight. Um, Akemi, I think, would have a bit of more, like, um... Not as broad of shoulders, but also like much more of a thinner waist. Open up the dress shirt. So if I was doing my more painterly style where I'm not going to do line work, I would actually um, clean this up a lot more. I'm going to keep the sketch just in case because I might like it more and I could always just go back and clean it up to actually color it in. But I think we're okay. Okay. Here is Akemi, or at least a okay sketch i think i think his shoulder does look a little bit too thin but you know i think we're okay doesn't look too bad and we'll kind of fiddle with this now in my venti video i actually don't remember what brush i used for line work uh but let's make a new layer i'm actually going to lower down the opacity so we can do some line work. So before we tackle the line art, I wanted to let you guys know more about Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. You can see that this box is actually really filled and quite hefty. Tokyo Treat is the heaviest Japanese snack box with 15 to 20 full-size Japanese snacks, including a Japanese exclusive drink, an instant ramen, exclusive seasonal Kit Kats, and much more. Lots of snacks to kind of like try out for the first time in such a big selection. While Sakura Co. is an authentic Japanese 
Japanese snack box filled with new seasonal Japanese treats every month. This box includes Japanese teas, cakes, seasonal Japanese treats, and even Japanese home goods. This month's box included this really beautiful black and red Japanese soup bowl. It's really pretty and a nice size, and I really like the design on this bowl. It's really pretty. Both boxes come with a 24-page cultural guide, and the booklet includes information on each of the snacks, including information on allergies and if the snack is vegetarian-friendly, and some of the useful tidbits about Japanese culture and the production of each snack. Tokyo Treat's theme is Snacking Shibuya, while Sakura Ko is the taste of Hokkaido. My favorites from the Sakura Ko box was definitely their tea. I always enjoy their selection of tea for each month's box. I think it's really great to try out new teas, especially if you're more into kind of like herbal or matcha or any kind of like the Japanese teas. This one was much more of an earthier tasting, kind of more aromatic compared to some other ones that I've had from previous boxes. I also really like Castellas, so I really enjoyed the Milk Bell Castellas. They look so cute and also just really easy to eat because they're kind of like in these little bite-sized um, sizes. For Tokyo Treat, the Strong Cola Jumbo Ramune Candy actually kind of took me by surprise. It really foams and fizzes in your mouth quite a bit and I think it's kind of fun to eat. Um, but also the Fujiya Assorted chocolates were wonderful too because um, you get one box out of the three new selections that they have. So I got the Night Temptations Parfait a la mode. A la, I do not know how to say it, but I really like the selection of chocolates. I think they're really cute. The packaging's adorable and like the chocolates are really, really tasty. So both Sakura Co and Tokyo Treat have had mystery items included in June's boxes. So each box has one mystery item selected for you. So I got the Sakura Jelly and the Shimi Choco Stick. Please check out the links in the description or the pinned comment to check out Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co if you're interested in trying out a whole new variety of amazing Japanese snacks. It's great for gifts for friends, family, or for yourself. So now let's attempt some line art. I can check my history. So I could have used dip pen or mapping pen. It might be dip pen that I used. Oops, let's go in here. I probably will turn on stabilization as well. Okay, let's give this a go. I'm actually quite nervous. I'm going to have to split my layers up like I usually do. So let's make this into a folder actually. Let's add a folder. Let's add this in. Uh, and let's start with the eyes because that's where I usually start. Yeah, how thin do I want to go? I usually don't do that thin of line work. Um, Bucket these, color in these parts. Let's get an okay shape. And I'll show you guys what I do. Um, there's, it's nothing really special. It's just how I've been doing it for such a long time. And it's easier for me to visualize uh, the full shape of the eye without just having just the line work. Because for me, for some reason, it's harder for me to visualize if it's just the line work, like just the outlines of the eyes. I know line art has like its advantages. I wish I was better at utilizing it, but I just feel too constricted using line work. Slowly widen this out. Cause so I find this box a little distracting, the bounding box. Is there a way to remove it? Okay. Uh, another layer. I'm gonna put this underneath. Uh, just because I like having a specific order, it makes it a lot faster for me to go through the line work. Um, and this is kind of like my skin layer, so... Yeah, we don't need to keep it like super duper clean, uh, but let's like kind of align our ear here. Okay. 
Okay, let's fix this up. I feel like he'd have pretty hands. As weird as that sounds. <laughs> Let's get a good hand into here. I hate drawing hands so much. <laughs> okay, let's do hair, which I'm gonna put above eyes and eyebrows so you can make this a little bit more translucent. I'm actually gonna change this to black as well so you can see it over top of everything else. Now to get sharper tips um, without um, forcibly tapering it or being super accurate, just erase. This is much easier. <laughs> kind of go back and forth. Like I said, I don't have a proper reference of Akemi, so I also don't remember how to draw him. All that. What am I talking about? I have a sketchbook. <laughs> prop this up yeah so we can have a little bit more accuracy he definitely has i gave him more of a rounder face here so oops which i'm gonna be struggling here a little bit is that i don't like to make the hair strands all the same length um so if you're struggling with hair and you have a lot of your hair strands um stopping and starting around the same length if that makes sense it might make your hair look a little bit too bulky and choppy or a little bit unnatural so try to mix it up kind of like f f like textured hair i guess if that makes sense like choppier anything that's more like straight cut i think it's a little bit more difficult let's do this side so i do want to See if we can do this properly. Because I definitely don't like how choppy that looks. But from far away, like, the line art doesn't really matter too much. So we have the hair. I won't put too much detail because I think I'll do it mostly in the coloring over there. Okay. So even though his bangs are quite choppy, I think I kind of like having him with more like tousled textured hair here. So I'll have to be mindful when coloring this. I like that. I, I mean, that's why I have it in this reference too. It's kind of like parted like this. This is darker in here. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna erase too much. Just make sure to keep things looking clean if you want it to look clean. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys what I do with the eyebrows and the eyes if they're being covered. So gonna do is hide the eyes and the eyebrows. I'm gonna go to my folder and set it to reference. How do I do this again? All oh, right, you don't have to set it to reference. That's the thing. So I'm gonna go into my magic wand uh, and we're gonna go here. So we can go specific layer and I am gonna choose my folder. Man, this is a, I, I always forget how to do this on Ibis Paint. And what you can do is just select the skin or you can select the inside of the hair i'm going to invert it after okay so we now we selected the skin or the face because everything's kind of like complete and like contained i can easily select with the magic wand i'm going to invert the selection and we're going to go back to my folder put back our eyes and our eyebrows and i'm going to take a fairly large brush with a small amount of opacity and uh, we can just kind of hover over very lightly though. And you can see this lightly goes over this. So we're going to do it to the eyebrow as well. And I'm just lightening it. Light, lightening it? Lightening it? 
I don't know if I would have preferred painting this or... Do I actually want to add his book? I don't know. I kind of don't want to make this looking too straight. I wanted to have a harder edge just because... Um, it's just kind of like an open shirt, very loose, so it doesn't make sense for it to be very like intentional with what it looks like in terms of how it opens. <laughs> so I'm trying to keep in mind where I'm going to put kind of like clothing folds and stuff because I'm going to rely mostly on the line work to complete it. Or I'm going to rely on the coloring to kind of complete the shapes here. Yeah, because this side looks more natural than the other side. Like, you know how like this looks more like stiff? I feel like the folds work better just because if it is like a more of a... Uh, a thinner, more... I don't want to say crispy, but kind of like that kind of material. Kind of like a dress shirt, right? Kind of like crunchy feeling. <laughs> just to make the composition and just like the illustration look a little bit more busy. But because it's not going to really add anything, I'm going to take it out. Why do I even... <laughs> Why do I even bother with these? It's okay. Okay, this is gonna look super janky, I apologize. Yeah, we'll do everything else later. I have the little strap for him. That. I think we're ready to do the coloring now after I don't know how long. <gasps> okay. Oh, his glasses! Um, so his glasses would technically be a little bit in front of his hair, maybe. Is there a way to make... Oh, there is a liquify pen. Shrink, expand, smooth, and revert. Should have drawn Masaki. Should have drawn Masaki. <laughs> I can use the wrong choice. I think that'll work. So let's get rid of all this garbage lines. This is why we like the liquify tool. Okay. And we'll merge these down. We'll do the little rim in the center. So I'm kind of doing the same thing, but I do need to hide uh, some other layers in here. Now, I don't know if I want his hair to be in like in front or behind. I could put it behind the hair, which means I need to select. I guess, okay, we're going to do this the other way, the more a little bit inaccurate way of doing this. Select only these portions. Go over with my eraser and yeah, so kind of his glasses, lens, and frame sits behind um, his hair. Okay, let's get to coloring. So I'm gonna close my folder. I'm gonna bring up my sketch a little bit and get rid of it. Or not get rid of it, I'm hiding it basically. I'm gonna make a new folder. Uh, and we can start coloring. So when I'm coloring, I'm gonna change my bucket tool first of all to specific layer. We're gonna make sure it's on our folder so that when we fill color, let's say his skin tone. Bro, he looks too yellow. We can just do this much more easily. Actually, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm gonna maybe do hard mapping pen to color in the base um, of wherever I need. But I usually color in sections anyway. I actually forgot to also erase a few things. Let's go back to our skin layer. So we can also change our background color if we want to to something very vibrant. 
Uh, what's something cute? Oh, with his color scheme. Kind of yellowy, though. This might be hard to see, but... Actually, skin, I do with the bucket tool, too. It's just this has a lot more cleanup required. I'm gonna alpha lock a lot of my layers just to minimize uh, me flipping through. Um, usually, I would actually use a layer almost for every different thing, like every kind of adjustment. Not only that, you can turn off the texture if you don't like it. I'm gonna make this a little bit brighter so we have a bit more of a smoother transition. I'm just gonna slowly add shadows and stuff. Just how I would usually color, pretty much. Except for I'm just focusing on the skin. I'm gonna work on section by section. I usually do skin first, then we'll tackle the eyes, then the hair, and then the rest of the body, which is usually just the clothing. really quickly just adding a little bit of warmth here purple or if you can i sometimes add multiply with a light purple to do kind of easier way of doing that but i think painting for me is a little bit faster so usually when i do liner i feel like i kind of mix up a little bit more of like cell shading and kind of like the softer shading Like I said, uh, the reason why I like using the colored pencil is because I am able to kind of build up value slowly rather than relying on blending because blending makes my brain more confused because you kind of have to worry about like directions of, let's see, of where things like are pushing and pulling towards each other. You get more muddier color sometimes too um, if you're not too careful. It's the same as like if you're using like wool paints. Or any kind of like that kind of medium where it's still like really workable while you're still coloring on top. Okay, so uh, I think that's pretty much it for skin. Yeah, the more I draw him, the more I keep wanting to change things for him. Because I used to draw him like a lot more round, but I, I do like the texture in the hair a little bit more. Okay, so eyes, what we're gonna do is fill this in. I'm gonna actually gonna use the hard mapping pen to do this. Lock it, and then I am going to add, go more purpley. Do it like this. Okay, now my weird method for eyes, we're gonna make a new uh, layer. I'm gonna turn the stabilizer back on. We're gonna go back to dip pen and Akemi's eyes are actually yellow. So let's actually change this first. We can also change the color a little bit later too, uh, but just to give me a good indication So this is like the equivalent if you did do the line work and you're filling in the other way. I'm just doing it basically the opposite. Because it makes sense in my brain uh, when I'm doing the line art initially, but it's quite backwards um, when I'm actually coloring it like this. Okay, so just closing this is eyes. Let's lock that. I am going to take a little bit of a darker color here. You can kind of get the top to be like that and then we can also go into here and kind of do a gradient going down. I'm going to gauge and blur this later just because I'm going to make it a lot smoother but you can also just use a normal airbrush. Okay, so I'm going to make another new layer. But this one we're clipping down to this layer. So 
So I'm gonna grab is a lighter color for the bottom portion. I'm also gonna be using the hard mapping brush to do this. Ah, I keep forgetting to take this off. I hate using the stabilizer. Then we're gonna lock this. I'm gonna go... Actually, yeah, we're gonna make a new layer first. So another new layer, clip that. I'm gonna get the pupil into here. So on the screen, it looks more gold. It's definitely leaning towards a little bit more greeny, that greeny gold. Um, so that's kind of unfortunate. My, my camera can't pick that up. Clipping it again. Let's get that bright highlight into here. Adding the highlights and stuff. If I'm doing it more important piece, I will take the light more into consideration. But because I'm doing this, um, I'm not caring too, too much. Um, but it's probably good to get in a good habit if you can. Sometimes I do this, sometimes I don't. I usually actually do this. Kind of make it hug the bottom of the pupil. Blue, probably. Or more just a baby blue into his eyes. Quickly do that. I usually do this on the opposite side of where the highlight is. Just kind of as like reflective light. And we can just lower the opacity so it's much more soft. Okay, last thing for the eyes. Go to the outlines or the line work for the entire base for the eyes and we're gonna slowly lighten things up so that they match with um, each area for the eyes. Soften it a little bit. Don't soften it too much because you might lose it. Uh, I'm actually gonna go and do the filters to do this really quickly because it's probably a lot faster. I'm not mad about that color, so I'm gonna try my best to pick this up and darken whatever I need to darken. So I like darkening the corners of the mouth. Can lighten up some of these lines just a smidge and drop in his hair color. Try my best to stay within the lines, but also not miss any gaps here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is another new layer, and I'm gonna clip it. Uh, we'll take our base color, we'll just darken it a little bit. So this is probably where I'm gonna Blur it again. Not too sure. Definitely looks way too saturated on camera. So I'm gonna fill this in. So I'm gonna take the bucket tool and fill this in. I'm actually gonna make it more of a navy because I like it to match probably his shirt color. Yeah, let's merge that down, make another new layer. I'm gonna try to keep stuff a little bit more minimal. Um, and I'm gonna change this to multiply. I don't hate that color. And what I'm gonna do is basically just fill this in uh, by adding all the strands I want. It's gonna definitely take me a while. So I'm gonna try to chunk these in. Use some of these shapes in first. We can use the eraser to kind of clean up and make things look a little bit more sharp. I definitely want to make sure that I can get majority of this kind of clean. Um, so when I end up merging everything, it's not too much of a hassle to clean up and kind of fix things. This is going to take forever. Do my best to sharpen these lines a little bit. Yeah, this, one, this doesn't really 
look that cute. <laughs> I hate doing hair like this. I like being able to like chunk it in a little bit larger and slowly um, fix it, but just because of how I have this set up, this is a little bit more of an easier way. Haven't talked like in a while. Okay. So, I'm gonna make a another new layer. Let's clip this. Let's add in our highlights. Like this. And we can also go back and change the colors. Sometimes I like to add kind of like a color shift. in some of the highlights back. Okay. We can add it in here too, just to Darken up some of these areas because usually I like to add this underneath like where the highlight is. So we can kind of darken it. Okay, so last thing I'm gonna do. Actually there's two things I'm gonna do. So one, make a new layer, clip it. Um, and then we'll add actually. Grab the skin tone, basically. Let's quickly go over 50 and I'll go into effects and we can blur it. Push this down. Last layer. Uh, clip and we can add any kind of, you can do surrounding colors, you can add extra colors. Just whatever you want to the hair. So I, move, I usually add it to the left and the right side. Um, or any of like the darker areas we can lighten up a little bit. Okay, so let's go into the line work for the hair. And let's soften these up quite a bit. And adding kind of that skin layer of color over top of where the bangs are, I can easily soften up here. Uh, do we want to add... I don't want to be too... bright of a white. Can I go with slightly off white? Glasses. I'm gonna make gold. I think I've always painted them as silver, but I think gold fits his aesthetic um, Just because he does have a little bit more of like yellowy gold even in his eyes and I think a little bit in his shirt as well Oh, I make it orange. That's why Okay, I think that's about it for The base colors. Hopefully I didn't miss too many pixels here and there. definitely becomes more apparent when you start adding like dark colors or adding the multiply layer. So new layer, clip, go into multiply and I'm gonna add in fairly light purple. Oh, I see an area that I missed. We can fill that in after I merge it. Adding this to anywhere that has darker colors. I'm gonna knock back that green color I just added. Not a fan. Yeah, okay, let's go ahead and merge it. Merge down, let's 
lock this. Actually, don't lock it quite yet. Um, Let's get that corner in. Uh, then we'll lock it. I'll add a little bit of a lighter patch of blue here. But yeah, I'm not really blending. I'm just kind of laying colors on top of one another until we get something that we are pleased with. I feel like this is how I did my VTuber model, like the style. I don't know, it kind of- it's a little unsettling how sterile looks, which is why I don't really like working with line art, because I, I- I don't know if it's my, my brain turns to a different method in my brain where it's like, oh, you need to make things look clean and, you know, that jazz. Yeah, I think I like kind of bending it like that. I want sharper edges, definitely, when rendering these kinds of shirts and stuff. I can't really see this this well because the glare. So apologies for tilting it. Okay. Actually not mad about this, but I would like to make this darker. this side darker too just because where the dress shirt is kind of covering up his body so sorry this must be so annoying to watch because i tilted it yeah i'm not i'm not entirely happy with this but you know for the most part probably would have got the same results even if i didn't work in ibis paint so i think that's that's probably a plus <laughs> I probably put enough effort into this that I, I don't hate it, but I have too many gripes about it for me to fully like it. I think I'm done. <laughs> stupid Akimi's design has a stupid stripe pattern on his shirt. Uh, yeah, make a new layer. I am gonna turn back stabilizer because I hate myself. Um, and let's do Akemi's stripe. So he has a light gray stripe kind of thing going on. Kind of more neutral. So I have it as like a thicker stripe. With the gray. But then he has an orange stripe as well, but it's a lot thinner. Yeah, I think pretty much just it. Um, here's Akemi. So what I'm actually gonna do is, um... We'll do that, we'll go back to the white and erase any of this. It doesn't need to be visible. How do I make it bigger? I like how I ask questions, like, as I'm changing it, it's like as if... It wasn't gonna be like obvious later. <laughs> I feel like it feels like a little magazine coverish esque. No, 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 no. I forgot. Uh, glasses. This is something I like to do. So, kind of bummed that. I'm not bummed. I'm kind of stupid for forgetting to do this part. We'll use gap recognition. I'm um, gonna use the hard mapping pen to do this. So what we're gonna do is lower the opacity quite a bit. I'm also going to erase uh, kind of chunks out of it as well. Okay, 
Another thing I'm going to do is make a new layer. I'm going to add... Well, let's use the brush tool. Hard mapping pen. Here's the white. Gonna make the, the glare a little bit less daunting. But yeah, I think now Akemi is finally finished. Uh, and hopefully you guys enjoyed watching today's video. I'll put the time lapse at the very end. Um, I think we hit the three hour mark with this one, I guess. Um, almost. But yeah, here's Akemi done with line art, um, full color, and all with my finger, which I am not used to. But hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!